Bonjour, Madame and Monsieur. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us, presidents of universities, researchers, uh, and students alike. I'm very happy to be here at the University of Toronto. Sometimes I have often said that uh, I've been here so often, it's surprising that they don't charge me tuition fees. But uh, that may happen. It is, though, a great pleasure to be here again to speak to you about science, technology, innovation, and why that should matter if it doesn't, and why it is important for Canada going forward. It's not just, though, about laboratories and white coats or microscopes. It's not just about buildings and equipment in those buildings. It is indeed about people. People come to institutions such as this one to find out ways to make the world better. People who want a better, a better life for themselves, or their families, or their communities. Here in southern Ontario, we have a wealth of expertise, from agri-foods to software development, from automotive manufacturing, food and beverage industry, to healthcare delivery, and so much more. No matter the industry, science and technology are driving the bottom line. They are, in fact, what will build our future. Canada, <clears throat> excuse me, Canada has what it takes to be an innovation leader. We have a highly skilled workforce and we have leading post-secondary institutions. Our government, the federal government, has been working very hard on building on the strengths found in this region to support the advancement of science and technology and help create jobs, those higher paying, higher quality jobs, both today and for tomorrow. This, as Patrick has meant, mentioned, has been a fundamental priority of our government since we formed office in 2006. At every single opportunity that our government has had, we have increased investments in science and technology, all the way from pure basic science through to and beyond applied research and development. We do this to improve the quality of life of Canadians. And because, ladies and gentlemen, we are not alone in the world in our problems, we can indeed sell our solutions to the rest of the world, improving their quality of life as well and creating jobs here at home. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's exactly why the federal government is invested in science and technology at historic levels. Again, we receive money in this area in Economic Action Plan 2012. And as I've said, it's not only to create jobs and economic growth here at home, but also to create, to uh, put Canadian ingenuity to work around the world. Now, despite these impressive and very generous investments, we continue to face challenges as a nation. Private sector participation in research and development and the development of that research is lagging. In fact, a report from the Science, Technology and Innovation Council noted that it's actually limiting our overall performance in innovation. Simply put, when businesses don't invest in research or develop the products of their research, it will be harder for them to stay competitive, not just locally, but certainly globally. And that means it will be harder for them to grow and create more jobs. That ultimately means a decline in our economy, a decline in our quality of life, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is not an option for this government. This impacts all Canadians, everyone from the guy on the shop floor or in the field, to the real estate agent, all the way up to university presidents, university professors, and university students. So today, I'm here to speak about a project, ladies and gentlemen, that will help change this equation. In this room, we have a number of players who are contributing to a significant investment in the future of Southern Ontario. This future includes intelligent, responsive cities. It will push the boundaries of data processing. It will bring us closer to deciphering the inner workings of the human brain, and it has the potential to improve the quality of life for us and millions of people around the world. And that, my friends, is exactly why 
the Government of Canada will provide researchers across southern Ontario with access to specialized equipment and software, very sophisticated stuff, that they need to bring us one giant leap closer to making this future a reality. I am very pleased to announce that the federal government will, through FedDev Ontario, provide up to $20 million for this investment. Congratulations. <clears throat> This project, led by the University of Toronto and Western University, a consortium of seven post-secondary institutions, and IBM, the lead industrial partner, will be creating a new collaborative research and innovation platform. Researchers attached to the consortium will use supercomputers and cloud computing infrastructure to crunch massive quantities of data on some fascinating subjects. Through this investment, we are putting in place supercomputing infrastructure that will position southern Ontario at the forefront of research and development in areas that are not only critically important to our communities, but also show great economic promise globally. This could include a new smart grid technologies, managed water systems, customized gene therapies, and more predictability of outcomes, not to mention so much more. As we all know, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, it is knowledge and technology that will help us meet the many challenges of the 21st century, from enhancing our health to managing our energy and natural resources. This project clearly will put us closer than ever to meeting some of these challenges head on. The federal government is very proud to be part of this project. It is building on the strengths found in our region of southern Ontario to support the advancement of science and technology, and it is helping create high-value added jobs through innovative applications of science and technology. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all the partners.